All right. I think we're ready to start the next session. And our first speaker, Yusin Su, uh, from, uh, that, that will tell us something about uh, senescence. From, from, she's from Columbia University. Yes. Yeah, I will. Thank you. I'd also like to start by thanking Morton, Alex, and Daniela for invitation to yet another fantastic meeting. Very happy to be here. So my lab has been studying um, taking human genetics and functional genomics approach to understand the fundamental mechanisms of aging and longevity in humans. And today I want to share um, results from our very recent studies on the role of human, uh, cellular senescence and human longevity. So as we discussed throughout this conference, cellular senescence is a fundamental mechanism of aging. It's triggered by stressors of aging and uh, has you know, characteristics like irreversible cell cycle arrest and pro-inflammatory secretum known as a SAS. And we now know that senescence drives aging and age-related diseases, myriad of them, and that really opens up this new era of Seno therapeutics that targets senescence as a gerotherapeutic uh, target, right? So as we heard from uh, Jim on the first day that there are over 80 studies ongoing or to begin to um, treat age-related diseases with this uh, seno therapeutics. But as you know, senescence always also plays beneficial role in many uh, biological processes, including tumor suppressor, embryonic development, cellular reprogramming, plasticity, and tissue repair and regeneration, raising the concerns about potential unforeseen side effect of this therapy, right? We think that human genetics, especially genetics of human longevity, can offer some insights into unknowns because a long-lived individuals such as centenarians, they, they are born with longevity gene variants from birth, probably going through um, multiple rounds of tissue repair, regeneration, of course, embryonic development without really obvious adverse side effect, if any, it's, it's um, exceptionally long lifespan, right? So if you could um, understand the impact of longevity associated variant on cellular senescence, we may be able to predict the outcome of senotherapies. So that's sort of the rationale of our study. And I'm going to give you three short stories about longevity associated variant, functional variant, uh, two coding variants in 36 and UB3C, and uh, non-coding regulatory variants in SMET3. So the way we approach this is initially to establish, so to move genetic association to causality by uh, generating this uh, CRISPR-engineered human pluripotent stem cell, such as embryonic uh, stem cell, as well as uh, pluripotent stem cell, induced pluripotent stem cell, using CRISPR so that it has carry specific variant, right, knock in. And then we differentiate them into multiple cell types and study the functional consequences at the molecular and cellular level and really drill down the mechanisms. Molecular outcome is relatively easy to study, but when you're thinking about longevity and cellular outcome, it's really unclear, you know, what are the phenotypes that we are looking at and what kind of cell types. So we base ourselves on our result and many others showing that geroprotectors such as rapamycin extends replicative lifespan in primary human cells. Uh, so shown here is the um, replicative lifespan of uh, untreated um, cells in black and with rapamycin you see that increase uh, replicative lifespan. So I will, the first story has to do with the 36 variant, which has been published that we discovered in near the centenarian, Ashkenazi Jewish centenarians. This is a double mutant uh, that are uh, linked. And uh, together with uh, Vera Gurvnova, we have shown that this centenarian associated um, two alleles together 
increase uh, DNA repair, line suppression, cancer cell death, mono ADPRIS isolation, and tighter association with laminate. Okay, this was done in overexpression system biochemical analysis. So we generated um, the NACIN cells in human ES cells to study the role in endogenous genomic context, and then we differentiate them into uh, human mesenchymal stem st stroma cells. And when we look at senescence compared to control cells, this is centenarian mutant cells of MSC um, increase replicative lifespan uh, concomitant with decrease in uh, SA beta gal, right? But when we did the transcriptome analysis, we really didn't see much differences except for um, extracellular matrix proteins. So then we realized 36 is really stress response gene, and we see this um, uh, interesting uh, overlap between um, you know, progerin-induced um, changes in cellular processes, um, including senescence. As you know, progerin is a toxic form of laminae that accumulate uh, during normal aging, and it's it dramatically e exacerbated in progeria syndrome, such as hutchinson gilford progeria. So we express progerin, and as you can see that compared to the wild type, centenarian cells increase replicative lifespan in the pre presence of progerin, and you see this with um, significant decline in beta gel with markers of senescence, right? P16 down, 21 down, lamin B1 up, and IL6 down, and proliferation is higher than in control cells. What was striking was when we did uh, RNA-seq analysis for transcriptome. And we found that differentially expressed genes are significantly enriched in genome maintenance genes and pathways, including DNA repair, cell cycle control, chromatin organization. And then you can really appreciate the striking difference here. So in the presence of progerin, um, the wild type uh, cells show enormous down regulation of DNA repair and genome maintenance genes, whereas in centenarian mutant cells, those are pretty much maintained. And as you heard from John Sedwi yesterday, one of the hallmark of senescence is, of course, activation of retrotransposons. And as, as John said, line one is one of the, the only live transposons uh, in humans. And already before you enter senescence, so we took the cell in this early passage level, then you see uh, enormous downregulation of retrotransposon, especially li line one element in centenarian cells. And as John said, one of the, um, the, the um, gold standard of measuring this is, of course, using the Western blood of um, ORF1 and ORF2, and then you see genomide downregulation of um, line one element in um, centenarian cells as compared to control. First story. Second story has to do with our discovery from whole exome sequencing analysis of about 500 centenarians and 500 controls. And then these are top 10 candidate missense variants that are associated with the longevity that are enriched in centenarians as compared to control. And we found four of those are involved in protein homeostasis, which we thought was very interesting. And then this is Dick Wan's work, uh, who shows that um, variant in UV3C is enriched in centenarians as compared to control, right? UV3C is a um, ubiquitin ligase, E3 ligase, uh, belonging to a HECT uh, family. And um, it ubiquitinate its uh, target in multiple mode, thereby regulate its function or lead it to degradation. But in relation to aging and longevity, there's really nothing much is known about the function of UV3C. The first clue as to how they function came when we look at GTEx uh, data, and we found 30 plus tissues UV3C expression goes down um, significantly with age, both men and women, as you can see in this uh, artery as an example. And at the protein level, same in kidney or muscle. 
And then um, when we look at um, adipose and bone marrow derived mesenchymal stem cells, and then you see that during senescence, UV3C level declines in both mRNA and protein level, right? So when we mimic this aging effect, namely uh, decline, by knocking it down UB3 3C expression in MSC using uh, two different shRNA, and you can see accelerates senescence accompanied by different markers of senescence, right? And when we antagonize this aging effect by re-expressing Y-type versus uh, centenarian um, mutant UB3C, then you see the centenarian allele uh, increase replicative lifespan. All right, what about mutant? So the mutant is located, the purative substrate binding site, it changed alanine to threonine in here. And we generate uh, NACIN cells in human embryonic stem cell, differentiate into mesenchymal stem cell. And in this case, in endogenous genomic context, during replicative senescence, you see compared to the wild type, mutant cell increase replicative lifespan. Okay. And um, when we treat them with uh, DNA damaging agent, chemtothecin and paracut, and you see this um, stress-induced um, senescence is also down um, in centenarian mutant cells compared to the wild type. Okay, so the UB3C longevity associated variant dampen uh, senescence response. Final story has to do with the regulatory variants that we found in SMET3 locus. So this was um, by capture, targeted capture sequencing analysis done by graduate student in the lab, Archana. And we found this cluster of uh, rare variants that are enriched in centenarians. Okay, it's about 20 variants that only occur in centenarians, but not in control in Ashkenazi Jewish centenarians, form haplotype. Okay, it turned out that SMET3 is a GWAS hotspot. It's associated with many age-related diseases, including osteoarthritis, breast cancer, cardiovascular disease, and so on, different color coded. They're all known coding variants, as you know that GWAS variants are known coding. If anything, they change regulatory um, activities, thereby contribute to differences in phenotype, right? So at least in cardiovascular disease, it's shown that disease-associated variant is associated with increased expression of SMET3. And SMET3 expression goes up with age in multiple tissues in, uh, in humans, um, as we uh, show in uh, GTEx analysis. And also senescence, this is primary fibroblast, SMET3 level goes up. We found, so, so in the interest of time, I'm not going to talk to you about this in detail, but we really perform very detailed mechanistic studies. We identify causal variant in these enhancer regions, and then we show that the longevity associated functional variant um, in this region reduce SMET3 expression. So that you can find detail in bioarchive, okay? So when we generate um, the, again, Nakin cell in human, in this case, IPS line to carry um, centenarian allele, we um, differentiate them into endothelial cells because these enhancers that carry the centenarian alleles they are uh, show tissue specific, cell type specific enhancer activity. So for example, stem cells, it's silent. Whereas mesoderm uh, derived cells such as endothelial cells, you see high activity, right? So when you differentiate them into endothelial cells, do you see differences in SMET3 expression? So stem cells, we don't see differences. But after uh, differentiation in endothelial cells, as we have shown in our studies, that SMET3 expression is reduced in centenarian uh, mutant cell compared to the wild type, and then um, at the protein level as well. We were quite surprised because the other two variants that I was showing you, that's uh, we studied the homozygous mutant versus wild type. 
This is a heterozygote carrier because regulatory variant, this is the best model because you can really look at the regulatory effect in the same environment. Everything else is the same except for the allele, right? But you see that very dramatic downregulation of SMA3 at the protein level. And what about uh, senescence? Uh, compared to the wild type, uh, SMA3 mutant cell increase uh, replicative lifespan accompanied uh, by reduction in acid beta gel and the usual uh, molecular markers of senescence. When we look at um, transcriptome, this is a screaming uh, interference signaling. So compared to the wild type, mutant cell, again, the heterozygote uh, mutant line, show enormous downregulation of uh, genes involved in interference signaling, as you can see, uh, compared to wild type versus mutant line. Okay? So I want to summarize. Using three different um, longevity-associated variants, we show that this variant uh, reduced cellular senescence in replicative, that this is caused by telomere shortening, as you know, at a high um, limit, um, as well as stress-induced senescence. So this suggests to us that if you mimic this longevity um, associated variant effect, namely dampening senescence, it may be um, um, beneficial or may promote uh, health span and lifespan in humans. So with that, I'd like to thank all my members, especially Jiping and uh, Dee, as well as uh, former graduate student Archana and wonderful collaborators uh, and funding source. I'll step here. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Yusin. We have time for one or two questions. Maybe I can start. Do you have any mechanistic understanding of the SMAT3 effect? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's described in bioarchive paper. So we know exactly which variant, which transcription factor modulate binding, thereby, you know, how they modulate enhancer activities. So it's all described biochemical, cellular assays. So yes, we do. I will have to check it out. Nia has a question. Uh, Yushin, so, you know, you want, as you said, that it's a great model because it's lifetime, right? And at the end, they, they also don't die from cancers. But what do you think happens, you know, if they have left senescent, mm -hmm. why don't they have trade-offs? <laughs> Of, of, you know, protection against, you know, something goes wrong. Yeah, at least for a uh, 36 point of view, right, you delay senescence, but you maintain good genome maintenance. So you really compensate for that, right? So you, you have a better repair, right? So I think that's why you don't see trade-off. Um, maybe one more quick, very quick question. Uh, hi, thank you very much for your talk. It was very interesting. One short question. Did you try also to find polygenic Riggs score? These are rare variants. Even among centenarians, this is rare. So it's very difficult to do polygenic score of the rare variant because chances are you have different individuals of particular carriers. So in other words, you are not going to find 36 variant carrying UB3C variant and SMA3 variants, right? So it's all individual effect, at least in this point. That's two questions. I'm sorry, but we really have to move on. Yeah. Uh, you can take the discussion after. Uh, thank you so much, Yusin Su. Amazing talk, as always. <laughs>